conventional warheads and then began to shift to nuclear warheads. And of course, today we think of missiles coming out of silos in a sub itself. But these vessels in their own way were the precursors to the United States Navy's own development of submerged craft carrying missiles surfacing and using them to affect in wartime. See, we through that we begin to see not only why these were important to study, but we can also see exactly why, as the Russians wanted to get their hands on these, the United States Navy tank. Yeah. Jim, can you confirm that the, uh, this large Japanese submarine, this double hull design, the kind of figure eight uh, configuration was also later an inspiration for the Typhoon class, another large Russian submarine. I saw that noted somewhere, but hadn't heard that before. I've seen it noted, but I don't know that to be the case. Yeah. Uh, I have to say that my, inter my, my focus on these sort of stops in the early 1950s. Uh, I don't know, maybe old school kind of guy, but uh, I'm more fascinated in the design and development of them up to that time. Yeah. But with that, I mean, again, that figure eight, the, the, the eight torpedoes, you know, one over the other. When we came up to the bow of I-400, it was so badly damaged. But those tubes, you could still see them sticking out, though mangled. And that was, you know, pretty conclusive in its own way. The point is, too, though, I think no matter what, no matter when subs are developed, while well, you have some evolutionary dead ends, all the roads lead towards the modern submarine in its own way. Mm -hmm. While powered differently, while being able to go deeper with different alloys and being armed in different ways, uh, it all goes back to that initial design that began in the early 20th century and with those tiny little Holland submarines that both the United States Navy and the Imperial Japanese Navy started with as their inaugural submarine fleet. Yeah, that's right. Hey, uh, this is Hans Nautilus. Since we're here, I don't know if it's possible to do it, but if we could, you know, back up and get a, a wider shot of looking aft into the break of the sub, we might be able to see that kind of figure eight configuration of these side-by-side -side hulls. I'm, I'm not sure, but let me know if that's possible or not. It would just be a request for that perspective. Certainly for myself, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we are. Uh, I think we're only going to have time probably to focus on this one location. So let's do it as complete as we can. It sounds like a really interesting perspective. Yeah. yeah. If you can. Yeah. Set it up on maybe the next pass, Jonathan. So, uh, Robert, uh, yeah. please t just tell me when you think you've gotten full coverage of this, uh, the rent here at the at the. Yeah, I don't know about. There's a lot of nooks and crannies here, so. Yeah, I think just poking in and around and making there's sure a, we have the. a gauge down here. Outer edge of it's the. Interesting. Oh, do you want to zoom in on that? Uh, never mind. No. no <laughs> That's not a gauge. Not a gauge. Yeah. Um, so just let's just make sure that we kind of can visualize the entire uh, oh, hemisphere my. of wreckage um, from from port to to starboard here on the back in terms of uh, coverage for the photogrammetry element, and then yeah. we're going to start poking our way back north. Towards the conning tower, we'll do a complete spin and coverage of the conning tower, go all the way back to the screws. Okay. And then Hans, yeah, any other stops on the way? Um, this will be the last time that we're heading this direction um, up the submarine, back, back towards the screws. Um, once we hit the screws, we're going to enter a different filmmaking mode for, for the immersive 360 coverage. Gotcha, thank you. Yeah, I think the way that the, the cameras are moving now, looking aft into this cross section is exactly what what will be interesting in the model to see if we can detect that, that yeah. figure eight. This is perfect, thank you. Bob, can you counter around this uh, edge of the hull, just to the right, kind of peek down from this from this lower perspective? Yeah, exactly. This is great flying, thank you. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm sorry, the cameras are very proud today, sticking out quite a bit more than any of our previous dies in an attempt to kind of peek through the uh, <laughs> this heavy backscatter. Well, um, they have an important job to do. Yeah, that's it. Will it will be worth it? I swear. It will pay off in the It'll end for sure. It'll pay off in the end. Yeah. It's cool. um, and on satellite um, feed three, just while we've been talking, I did download the images that we took during the brief um, spin around the 5.6 inch gun. Um, it looks like that model is going to complete shortly. The, the floor of the ocean is interesting. I wonder. Yeah, it's got that patterning, huh? I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, it was. It's it's very. Um, it looks like it's got like a crust on the top a little bit. The way it kind of like, and you can tell the sub landed there and like, you know, moved the sediment. But you can kind of yeah. see like break breakages in the sediment on top of yeah. the, the layer there. It's pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty cool there. So um, I'm not sure who on the chat had asked if we had enough coverage of the 5.7 inch gun. Um, five yeah, inch, five inch, five inch gun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I did oh, just wow. create the 3D model of it. It kind of shows the goal of this technology. Um, of course, we you know there's there's steps for automating this process, but um, what this Those model. If you're watching, if you can see this on satellite three. Even in its draft form. Uh, it represents a new way of visualizing rapidly um, a mission like this, uh, a time spent at an object of interest. Uh, the, the white accuracy. dots. I love the accuracy that you've even got the corals that have been attached <laughs> to it. That's fabulous. Yeah, the white, the white dots all represent the photos that were used. And this is a technology that complements, of course, the existing products like phot photography or incredible video that we get out. Um, but it allows you to kind of see these things in situ, including even actually being able to peer beneath the ribs um, at the structure beneath. Um, yeah. That's really powerful. Like the uh, yeah. So what I'll do right now, I'm just going to... Impressive. Gonna, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, just an incredibly powerful um, tool that requires, still requires some extra you know, time spent in the specific style of surveying, like like Robert's doing such a great job. But um, I think one of the big challenges of technologies like this is is people have really struggled to find out how to store it. Like, how how do you archive this uh, video? You, it's intuitive. Sometimes it sits in somebody's hard drive, you know, and it's pulled yeah. out years later when we go back and do a mission. But the style of uh, it's still a nut to crack, I think, by the greater scientific and archaeological um, community on how to store and make available this data. Um, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure Hans or, or, or our other participants from shore, if you guys from an archaeological perspective have seen just uh, great examples of how people are, are sharing or otherwise archiving this data and using it. We're seeing some of it being presented to the public on websites. The Bureau of Ocean Energy Management has an underwater museum that includes some work on wreck sites that we've all worked on in the past. And that those the ortho mosaics in particular that they're creating have allowed the public to take a little bit of a virtual tour. In terms of the other data as it's archived, uh, it all depends. Yeah. We just finished a project on another wreck where we just scanned it in great detail. Uh, and, you know, the renders are great, but what I also love is the fact that it's all measurable and we've got that data. But the size of that, those sets of files, and I'm talking about a wooden boat that we dug out of the sewer trench uh, eight feet down, yeah. and it was 19 feet long by seven and a half feet wide, and it's still, it's a massive file. So you take something like this. It's an issue I think that we all have to really confront because as this, Technology continues to evolve, and this all right. is I think we absolutely nailed all this. No, Thank you, sir. I'd say, okay. uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. Um, uh, I'd say if we can just uh, continue back up towards the the screws and uh, uh, spend some some TLC, getting full coverage of the uh, the remains of the conning tower, please. Okay.
Do we need more visuals on the other side of the conning tower, on the port yeah, side? Yeah, I, I would like us to uh, please do just as comprehensive a job as we can in and around the nooks and crannies of the entire conning tower, leaving, leaving no thing untouched as we move. Copy. Um, okay. Absolutely. We can look at all your data later and enthuse. Much appreciated. To our viewer inquiring about the 3D printing, yes, please, please do uh, tag Nautilus Live when you decide to uh, do that printing so that you can share with us uh, the rendering that you have. And, and oh, yeah. yes, the 3D. Um, the 3D view of this is absolutely am amazing, and this this photogrammetry and this immersion that we're looking forward to having uh, in programming that we could eventually use as virtual reality and headsets and yep. ID Max and 3D Max. It's going to be um, we're just on the cutting edge of this, and the, the development is happening literally right in front of us. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's super powerful, super fun, um, and uh, I'm definitely excited to continue sharing with with the world this style of, of material. I guess we go back here and get this back part. Yeah, if you come around and do the back and this other side a little more, I'll bump out a ladder that way, and then we can come around and then we'll continue that way up the rest of the ship. That is a long ladder down into the main pressure hall from that bridge. Yeah. If you're looking in satellite feed three, uh, Jonathan is currently showing us the the images that we have so far and really, really impressive as far as putting together the width uh, of this submarine and seeing just how large it is from one side to the next. It's incredible. Yeah, it's, it's pretty massive. Okay, how do you want to deal with this? Are we chopping it into vertical slices or? Uh, as you will. We can do whatever you want that you okay. feel is most uh, efficient and, and uh, repeatable. Yeah, I don't really know. Uh, personally, I think, <laughs> I would think that you should do one tether, like uh, do circles, like you're icing a cake uh, on the way up. Um, yeah, I can't, like I can't get in there, right? Oh yeah, right. yeah, that's that's not a problem. I think just, just doing, so doing as much coverage around the conning tower. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely uh, mind the jewelry. <laughs> we don't typically get this wrapped up in the wreck. So. Yeah. Robert, we've got a, a shout out for you coming from my neck of the woods, Murphy, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, just complimenting how amazing your skills are piloting over there. It's a great time, well-timed comment as I'm asking Robert to do yet more things that are... <laughs> That's right. Robert, the internet really enjoys here. It's all fun and games so you get hung up in it. <laughs> Not on this watch. No. No, that doesn't happen. Not with Robert. Well, let's also give a shout out to utilizing Atalanta at 18,000 feet and Absolutely. using that as the ROV, not one. I'm lowering a little bit, but you're pretty much at the end. Yeah. Yeah, that w uh, midway in particular was just an outstanding. Are you coming this way? Okay. Because we got a lot more to do up there, so. Yeah. All of us ashore in Silver Spring, we're watching you guys and just holding our breath, but also cheering you on. Well, we appreciate that so much. Okay, I think we got that bit. I come up some and go around again. Okay. 
come back here and then this is I'll 20, come 23 no 24 <sighs> why has it been doing that unvalid or corrupt input data all right fine I'll do it manually so, Jim, this upper uh, chamber, you know, elevated above the main pressure vessel is, is the periscope room, isn't it? Beneath the exposed bridge? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. I mean, again, you, it really shows you the difference between pressure hull and then the outer hull. The amount of force to tear that hanger and all of this off, though, Hans. Yeah, that's impressive. I also want to give a shout out, you know, I know they've been mentioned before, but, you know, Terry Kirby, Steve Price, Max Kramer, the whole team, all of them there at Hurl. Yeah. Yep. We, would, we wouldn't be here if they hadn't found these and dived them first. I agree. They did an excellent job of looking at the footage from the sinking, the historic footage, and being able to reference the mountains of Oahu in the background to locate, you know, a survey area. Oh, really? You know, That's incredible. Work. Yeah. Sorry, guys, for the distracting. Been up. All good. And then they'd go out and just start hunting for them and doing test so dives in the rest because there wasn't the, a lot of... That pole. The pole. Yeah. That's a true testament to the tenacity of research. You know, you just, exploration, you just get out there, you got to do it. Uh, I can come up a bit, but I don't know. Pick if somewhere to start. To go over the pole? Or do you want to... Yeah, I think... Uh, yeah. I don't know, where are we at? We have to move. And in untethered submersibles, where if you get snagged, uh, you're you're snagged. Hence, you yeah. dive with two. Yeah. That's a good point. Okay. Well, simplify. I gotta, where's my simplify options? Tools. So we're Having like done right up against them. the pole yeah. there. So I'm gonna come away. Well. I guess we could we could ride the pole. Oh uh, yeah, I don't need a photogrammetry model of the pole. <laughs> really? Yeah, just just lock the two cameras there right against the pole and just spin it. <laughs> no negative. So Kristen, about the same from yesterday with what we saw in the submarine as far as the ecosystem that's grown around it. Pretty limited. Yeah, it definitely looks pretty similar to what we saw yesterday. Yeah, it's, it's not as um, encrusted as you might expect. Be curious to see what the size of this one was, Jason, if they possibly had done any of the coating like we think they, pos they did on the others. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a little bit and see if I can find any info. Hello, Germany. Thank you for joining us. We are currently viewing the I-401 Imperial Japanese oh, Navy submarine that was massive. scuttled back in 1946. All right, I got to right, we'll come back. Watch yeah, the yeah I'm watching. Okay. <laughs> Oh, man. You totally cleared it. <laughs> wow. Just, that's awesome, guys. 
Jim, that is the single mount 25 millimeter just aft of the bridge, right there on the platform, yeah. pointed directly skyward. And the other yeah. uh, smaller guns were all triple mounts, but that's the single mount. That's remarkable. I just want to call out our Herc pilot and co-pilot of navigating around this pole that the tether is yeah. so is close to. Dancing. Nice Dancing job. around Dancing. it, for sure. <laughs> you can see that on channel. Smooth three. operator. Is that an optical illusion, or is that periscope bent? Looks like it's got a bend to it. Yeah, yeah. it's dented in there. It's a great, yeah. Great image of a, a an run. opening there. Yeah, that hatch opening. Did we get that? I don't know if we can. It's kind of down in there. You can see the lookout positions in those hoops there, the standing platform and to brace the lookout. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It gives you perspective of how large this actually is. There'd be a human being going wow. down into that hole. This is the Imperial Japanese Navy submarine, the I-401. I think it'd be a cool zoom if we uh, wanted to look at that. So do we, uh, are we happy with that on that side? I'm happy, I think you're doing a great job. All right, come on, I'm gonna come around here again. That's going to be an incredible, incredible view. Okay. I think we have some significant I only got two hours left. Here. So, yeah, there you got to get this model in the bag. Yeah. Yeah. I think we just finish this out, go do a quick run down to the deck, or to the screws, and then... Uh, Jonathan, do you want us coming up the more eastern side of the ship? That side that we haven't seen before? Yep. Yeah. When we go up? Okay. Copy. I don't know if anybody mentioned it, but the hatches, by the way, that go into the pressure hull are pretty much Japanese standard 25.5 inch uh, or, you know, for our metric friends, 64.7 centimeters. That's a pretty tight squeeze. Yeah. It looks like we have video footage from um, the time when the periscope was actually up when the torpedoes went out. So. Oh, on the surface? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so what are we doing? We're going to the other side? Head to the screws. Okay. Thanks for joining us, Wisconsin. We're happy to have you here. Appreciate all of you that have commented in and shared your knowledge and information with us. Look at that view, that's amazing.
Anybody has not mentioned it, Japan and Germany, of course, were trading knowledge back and forth. That's a German periscope. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Actually, German manufactured. 40 feet long, 7.87 7 inches in diameter. Do you yep, need, same are, with the mini that was covered off of Pearl Harbor, also German periscopes and optics. Do we know how many periscopes were, uh, were on board? Each had two. Two? Yes. One's a night periscope. Okay. You're going to start to see some shift change taking place as first shift is going to be relieved by our second, our 12 to 4 watch. They'll be the ones wrapping it up with everyone. Thank you so very much for those of you who have tuned in and joined us and chimed in to share your information along with us. Thank you for your patience as we've gotten right to where we needed to be to get the images that we needed. For me, this is Thank my last all. watch of this expedition. Um, I've had the absolute pleasure of being a part of this and I'm so very grateful for the opportunity and looking forward to taking this back to my students in my classroom in Tennessee. Uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure, and I appreciate it. You've been thank a great you for SCF. everything you've done. With you've been a great SCF. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. It's quite the learning process when you're not familiar with uh, all of the equipment and the responsibilities, but uh, I did my best. Okay, so we got all this pretty well nailed. Yep. So you want to start moving up there? Okay. Yep. Uh, a ton. A ton. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Well, uh, once we're once we're down at the end, I'm gonna need about five minutes to reconfigure. So, if you could just photogrammetry down to the screws, and then we'll. Uh... Wait. What? What? Say again. Just photogrammetry down to the screws, and then I'll need about five minutes to reset. Okay, are we doing this? We're doing this down low? Down low. Down on the down low. Completely captivated by the sand. Yeah. And how that's, that's that settled like that. It's amazing. You can almost visualize the impact that was coming down. It's yeah. And the fact that it is still in, it has those shapes. And, and as compacted as it is to, to form that with, without, I guess, Robert, much of the current, you said not too much down there? No, no. It's so interesting. Bad. That little shard would cause some problems with the tether. Yeah, those yes, are Yes, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> those are the gotchas. <laughs> I'm sure it's been said, but if not, you guys realize that with the kind of detailed capture you're getting with all these details, this is the most accurate rendition that's measurable of these that will exist because the original blueprints were destroyed at the end of the war. Oh, wow. And that's absolutely what makes this so exciting to yeah. be able to document and to be able to have in, in all layers. All right, my relief is here. Ale is uh, next on watch for you here in the... Science Communications Fellow position. Again, thank you so very much for all the opportunities. You guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, thank watch you. team. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, everybody. This is a big hole. That's a big hole. Torpedo or implosion?
hard to say because the bubble of gas that's generated with an explosion underwater both goes in and out, and you have that outward bend or push out of plates, um, even when you've had a torpedo detonation. This is looking... Hans, I'm trying to remember where, where were the two hits. Well, you know, I always assume that as the bows break off and are a distance away, that they were targeting forward of the conning tower, and that's, you know, where one of the hits happens. And, and when things break off like that, then you don't have an isolated spot you can analyze, really. You're looking at the break. Uh, yeah. But if it's true that they use two torpedoes, I, yeah, I don't know what the documents have to say about where those strikes were. Most of the attention is focused on I-400. Yeah. Okay, we're going through a uh, watch change here, so uh, we're going to let the pilots brief each other, and once they're all briefed, we'll come back and start start chatting. Okay. Hans, she was hit with two Mark 18s fired by the Cabazon um, and sank at the stern. So that suggests to me that what we're looking at is a torpedo hit. That would be a good guess. That would explain that if it impacted at the stern, that kind of crushed accordion section, all the damage back there. But maybe the midships area that we're looking at could have been one of those torpedo hits. Yeah. I think, yeah. It, you know, found the, the log for the cabazon that might be in there. So, Jim and Hans, yesterday when we were at the uh, I-201, I was uh, amazed that that was just a single torpedo strike, right? Uh, I think uh, forward of the sail. But when we looked and measured yeah. the two pieces, they seemed to add up exactly to the original length of the submarine, as if it was just sheared, as opposed to uh, having lost anything in a in a torpedo explosion. Is that sensible or? Yeah. No, it, it makes some sense, but, you know, the other sub things that I've seen sunk, it, there's much more mangling, as we're seeing here with that hit. Um, but it could have just cracked it. Yeah. We actually, they actually had a, a film on YouTube of the, uh, of the torpedo strike, and it, it looked like there was a small explosion, then a much larger one. Yeah. Um, but when you look at the actual damage to the submarine itself, it, it didn't seem commensurate with the size of the explosion you saw on the surface. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I'm right under you, so you can look down. There, come up a bit. We're still going through uh, a, a can watch Can you look at the uh, craft for me? Where is it? It's out. Oh. Uh, I just wanted to see where it was. Hey, Hans. Russ just sent me uh, footage of them sinking 401. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Three torpedoes, eh? Turn hit. Wow. The first, yeah, that first hit is aft. The second one is roughly mid -shift. Holy crap. Whoa. Yeah. 
One almost emitted ships on the starboard side. And then going going down by the stern. And the bow up. That bow had to have broke the bow didn't get blown off. That bow broke off. I think as it came up, huh? Yeah, it could be. Looking at the footage, the rust. Yeah, it no, could... it's what it looks like. Two hits, and Mark 18s are a powerful weapon. So, yeah, I mean, this looks to me, you know, thank you, Russ. That hit stern, you know, on the one side, and then the second hit. Yeah. Hey, um, Jonathan? Yes. Can I get one of the stereo cameras up? Uh, Roger. Oops. All right, so that's, uh, I mean, uh, it's one a of, wider. One of the zoomed out ones, mainly, so I can see these things sneaking up on me. Can I do that without crashing OBS? They have these things called scenes, and you can just press a button on your stream deck, and all that magically appears in OBS. <laughs> Thanks. Super helpful. <laughs> Uh, that's not going to do it. Now that's interesting, Jim. You know, if it was both from the Cabazon, then those hits were on the starboard side. Well, uh, and we're looking at that immense are damage we, uh, on the port side. Are we towards the screws right now? How, how far are we from completing the transect? Are we we're in, it looks like we're midships. If you can, if you could complete the survey, which is this view, I'm going to have to redo everything anyway for the photogrammetry. Uh, ch -ch. What are we doing right now? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to redo everything for immersive filming. So essentially, we just need to get down to the stern or uh, the screws. Roger. Uh, photogrammetrying our way here, there, and hither, and then I'm going to put everything into. Uh, yeah. All right. I'll uh, move fast. If you hear a giant bump, don't panic. It's me hitting something because I can't see. Let's, uh, Can we let's, tilt down on the... Let's drop Atalanta down a little bit. Yeah. Let me use that. Did we... Uh, um, the cameras, are they still all the way out and proud? No. Oh, so you pulled the cameras back in? Yeah, but I moved the vehicle closer. Okay. Well, is that the tether showing up in my sonar? Or is that... Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, okay. You want to uh, chase um, me up there please, a bit, Chris? Yeah. Uh, please go up, too. Um, we need to kind of cover butter, butter up and over the railing just a little bit for all of these objects. Bridge, bridge now. Two zero meters. Three, four, five. Ah, sugar. Like that? Yeah. And go up. Huh? Go up. Up? What go camera up. am I looking at? You're looking at both of the cameras right that are currently viewing. I need to see up onto the deck, please. And then back down, kind of zigging, zagging up and down. I want to see full coverage of the deck, and then we go down. You want to see full coverage of the deck with the camera that's looking down? Yeah, just well, until I can see that edge. Yeah? Eh, so can't up. get there from here, man, unless I back up. See it on the, see it on the wide angle. Uh, and I'm talking, yeah, the wide angle up top. Yeah. Just uh, forward, just a little bit more. The way to go on that's, the bottom. That's fine. Just go for it. And that's one of the 140 millimeter guns? Yeah, that's cool? the behind of the gun, in fact, that I'm just uploading right now to Sketchfab. And I wonder if Jim uh, Hans can comment. We were debating uh, about Come the 201. Chris. It's, on, it's underway. On the way, Roger. Roger. Whether the deck had a wooden, a wooden deck over the metal framing we're seeing. Um, yes. Yeah. And I, don't, I think the I think the final conclusion for the two one probably How not. Where is it to the end there? But what about what about uh, the four hundred one? Like forty meters. One second. Let me. Four hundred one. Yeah. 
I, I gotta wait. So. so I gotta wait for the ship. Look. Can I go look at the gun while I'm waiting for the ship? Um, I just need more. Uh, we already have a 3D model of the gun. Um, I don't if have we any can. Good video of it. I'm waiting for the ship. So I got 20 meters to go. It's 20 meters till Atlanta gets here. That's going to be. Can uh, you lateral over to the left? At and, least uh, two minutes. Can you lateral over to the left? Continue down that way and then go up by two meters and lateral right within the limits of your tether, avoiding that big chunk of metal. Right. I'm going to come up as you come under me. Uh, we don't need to go full under. We already got okay. good coverage of all that area. Just a little bit over to the ladder looking thing. That's the next chunk of metal uh, hanging down to the left in the wide angle. Right. I remember seeing in Terry's uh, sketch a series of these things that looked like slides on the outside. Yeah. Uh, have, we, have we had some input about what they might be? I think one. in places they're sides of the tunnel, sides of the, the outer hull at the upper level that have broken off and are hanging down, at least that one piece we just saw. Yeah. Yeah, that's peeled away. Right, and here's another, I guess. There's a hole in the pressure hull here. You want me to come up, Dan? No, you're good. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely more remnant okay. of what that's looks good. like wooden right there. Yep. than the two holes. Right, if we're going to go all the way around the front, I'm going to keep the ship going yeah you gotta keep the ship moving and then uh bridge, so you, you can go up two, zero, now three four five and um look at the gun i want to see the, the gun i yeah, really yeah. want to see the gun hold on get up up and forward just a little bit uh on top of the deck and fly slowly back towards the gun right there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go Not, just with that angle please just fly slowly towards the gun slowly so, so jim and hans one of the things i read about the yep. 401 is that it had uh exterior cabling to demagnetize it to lower its magnetic signal yeah and i'm wondering if those are the cables we're seeing along the side here we definitely saw them on the starboard side but um the gaussing cables are some of my favorite things to see and they're definitely on the 401 yeah so this is i think one of uh, four of these 140 millimeter guns yeah 140 millimeter uh, can you also dip down right behind this gun and get some of the detail of that twisted metal down on the deck, right behind the gun? Roger. How excited are you right now, Dan? Pretty excited. <laughs> Speechless. Yeah. <laughs> Speechless. <laughs> well, this is in contrast to the 201 yesterday, which had uh, almost no guns on deck because it was just so concerned about making high speed. I think it just had the single uh, 25 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. That is the thing that's kind of unimaginable is that this thing would be underwater going at 20, 30 knots uh, with I just this chunk of metal gun just ripping in the water. Yeah. Yeah, not quite that fast, but... Uh, no? <laughs> how, how fast? No, I think... Uh, I think the uh, underwater speed for this one is not yesterday. Uh, that was 19 knots. This oh, one, yesterday with this the fast one, one. Yeah, this one I think has a more like a submerged speed of seven knots. But I'll, I'll let the experts chime in. And oh no, that's that's right. The 201 was very fast underwater and had retractable, smaller anti-aircraft gun. This is a little large 14 centimeter deck gun that the 400 class series had. Yeah. Okay, give me a full detail deck or a gun, Roger. gun photo spin. Just give me a second here. Roger. <laughs> I'm uh, imagining what it would be like to put a few rounds through that. Goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> This uh, this sub was never really used in anger, was it? Uh, well, again, I'll let the ex experts chime in. Go ahead. Lots of plans, but um, uh, it, it it I think was used in uh, 
in one uh, one battle. We got some funky tether action going on. We do have some funky tether action going on. Thanks for parroting that. <laughs> So seriously funky tether action going on. A place called Ulithi. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. This is the mangled bit you want to see here, Jonathan? Uh, yeah, that's good enough, though. Right you can do your high It is Ulithi, but they did not They did not get there. You can do this your... This type uh, of central submarine was specifically designed to strike a psychological blow with its carrier aircraft in its, uh, its hangar. Uh, the original plan was to hit an American city. Uh, Admiral Yamamoto thought, San particularly Francisco. given what had happened to the Doolittle wreck, that that might discomfort Americans to have Japanese aircraft suddenly appear and strike. Uh, and while carrier aircraft had certainly done some work with smaller subs, I mean, the firebombing raid on Forest over in Oregon, the thought of faster planes and more oh, than yeah. one with a free high run aircraft carried by these. And do I have a tether up? up Tether's okay, but I, yeah, I can do some. I think I just got kind of flipped over on itself. And that fleet could inflict some All really right. serious damage in the city. It. Thank you. But plan shifted to instead attack the Panama Canal and to take out the lake by draining it, it by hitting uh, the gate. Yeah, you can look at the tether. On the uh, Pacific side. But looks at like the end, right. with the firebombing, the pan and the need to strike the United States bit? Navy nope. closer in June. I actually want to come down and move closer. plans were shifted to instead okay. strike the fleet anchorage at Ulysses. Selfie Apple, of me coming around the... Located. 145 uh, meters. They were on their way to do that when the war ended, and both I-400 and I-401 ended up surrendering to American forces, and their Ceyron aircraft were jettisoned. Yeah, and I, I, I had read that there was uh, an internal debate amongst the hierarchy of the Japanese, okay, Imperial Japanese Navy, and there was pressure to, right. to pull back from these right. plans of it attacking U.S. cities or, or the Panama Canal because of uh, a concern about how rapidly the Americans were advancing in the Pacific and they had to defend locally. Uh, and so that was part of that whole shift away from the, the plans for the for the canal. Yes, and indeed the attack that was going to be made at Ulysses was going to launch the Ceyron, but in a kamikaze style. So clearly... You can, you can lift up by just a little bit. Technology so the, oh, craft, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me try that again. But Sorry. You don't have to try again. Not enough. Keep going down. And Roger. More than enough. No. Sorry, I'm just coming up a couple meters. Just yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Oh, come, come back down. And the bomber, the bombers had pontoons, but I guess uh, the the original plan called for them to ditch the pontoons on the way back to uh, drop the pontoons and then um, ditch by the submarine on the way back, and then, as you say, eventually it just looks scary, it right? Turned into a kamikaze. It's purposing you know, if you look yeah. at your pitch and roll. Yeah. So, yeah, if you get your average altitude there, okay. you're, you're all right. As long as you're Some double digits on the altitude on the there. At the start of the war were capable of being recovered. And the British had developed carriers, uh, submarines that were aircraft carriers with boat planes as well in World War I. So the idea wasn't novel, but what was novel was the size. These, I-400 was the world's largest submarine. And these subs were capable of going around the world one and a half times. Wow. Just given the incredible fuel. Remarkable, yeah. 3,530 tons of fuel. I mean, 3,500 yeah, uh, um, yeah, I might need the last few lot. meters to get around. I, I can't help no, looking at this contrast down. of uh, an instrument of destruction. Yeah, just as I come around the end here. Now emblazoned with such beauty with these corals. It's, it, it's really a, an amazing uh, contrast. Yeah, these look like a pale yeah. pink coral. It is. Well, time in the deep ocean certainly changes it. <laughs> Let me just correct something. 3,530 is, is the tonnage. It's not remarkable. the amount of fuel they carried. The capacity of fuel carried that one and a half times around the there world at 14 knots. Wow. They could see, or I should say, motor 37,500. Don't do this at home, kids. <laughs> and, 
And Jim, you said this was the, the world's largest submarine. I think that was until about 1965 or so when the, the Benjamin Franklin was built. I mean, that was the first that was larger. Yeah, these remained the biggest sub. Yeah, they remained the biggest subs for the longest time. And the Russians That's tore good. one yep. of them, which is why you see it here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> fire, fire at will. Fire for effect. Fire for effect. This is going to result in an extraordinarily detailed model of this um, deck gun. And the bubblegum coral that's grown on it. That's correct. Yeah, Hans, that wrinkling is exactly what we've seen on other when you've had gases generated by the explosion going through and rippling through that hull, man. A little more height. Roger. Sorry. Yeah. It, that, that downward camera angle is going to be key. Yeah. Oh, let's look down with this one in. I'll stick the uh, stereo camera right by all the machinations. Raj, yep. Like There's our squat lobster. Right, Taylor Ann, what did, can you, who's that? Uh, from this angle, I can't quite tell if it's a lobster or a crab. There are two. They might be crabs like we saw yesterday. We did see both. looking like in the stereo cam it might be a, a crab Hans what was the angle they could get with this one was it like the other carriers where they couldn't go quite straight up well I'm sure they could use this in an anti-aircraft fashion but I don't know if they could elevate it directly overhead We'll also use it as a surface gun in targets that you didn't need torpedoes for. Dan, I need yeah. you to back up and paint the floor too Roger. with the cameras. Roger, can do. I, it's a deck gun. I don't think they could get that high an elevation. They'd be more concerned with getting underneath the water than shooting back at aircraft. If you challenge Dan, yeah. he'll, gra he'll grab that handle and start turning, and we'll see. Craft manipulator. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like he could. It's in remarkable yeah, it's in remarkable it condition. Just, in, just incredible. We have a viewer asking how much time is left in the dive. Uh, about an hour and 45 minutes. Yes. Is that enough yeah. there, Jonathan? Yeah, it's enough. Deck. Let's let's get Adel down uh, towards the screws. About an hour and fifteen. Right here. Okay. An hour uh, and fifteen. That's to the north. I'm assuming. Uh, K two. Yes, to the north. Yes, to the north. That has to be the most entertaining turn I've ever taken out of my tether. <laughs> <laughs> tether management, <laughs> five point five. All right, so I might have put that one in on purpose just to do that. <laughs> so, Larry, uh, what? what also, three 25 millimeter triple mount anti aircraft positions on this sub, but they were all on top of the hangar. So, they're not on the main body anymore. I think we saw one still attached to the main hangar in 2005, and yeah. I think we saw another one just loose sitting in the sand. Uh, the triple? Triple ones they had mounted up there? Five millimeter anti-aircraft gun. Yeah. Which was the gun we saw in the 201 yesterday. Yeah. Okay, I'm single digits from the floor. So, um, yeah, you, you okay. might want to come up a little or I'm going to run into you. Okay. Get out of my way, Ray. <laughs> I was waiting for you to have your moment. I did. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. 
How's that? How are you I'm going to turn the down lights off. Sorry. Hey, you might have Definitely. to come right up as they come by you there, just to avoid the yeah. be embarrassing to get a twist in it now after we <laughs> took a turn out. You can definitely see the remains of the wooden deck over the, uh, the steel frames for it. All right, there you go. Yeah, I agree. It looks, looks a lot like the wooden deck, but the, the 201, I'm still on the fence about that one, Jim. It, it looks different to me, and I don't know if it's was wooden or a just kind of a steel open grating frame. Yeah. But those are good degaussing tables. That's a wonderful shot. So were the cables bare or did they have uh, a jacket on them? Oh, I'm no expert. I think they were insulated they were just charged to, to wrap the whole vessel in a charged field yeah um, yeah i think they're insulated they're insulated as i recall it looked like the ones we saw were i just weren't sure what kind of cables they were to we still do it we still degauss vessels at Pearl harbor there's a big area they can bring a submarine in and in, into a field like that to reduce the magnetic signature. So, are the you guys have seen the screws already? They're buried in the mud, are they? Or is that one there just poking out? The starboard screw is pretty apparent. I think the port one, maybe there was one blade up. Yeah, it looks. Uh, yeah. Me one blade sticking out right there. Okay, we're meant to come around the stern, are we, John? Yeah, John's not here, but that is indeed what we're going to do. Five well, hundred. Uh, coming on. And then he's going to want to switch into an immersive mode. And it's quite complicated what he described. He had uh, Atlanta off on the side, uh, Herc coming straight down the seam um, above the submarine and I'm just hoping that he'll be back from lunch before we start that. <laughs> <laughs> you should know better than leave me unsupervised in here. What, Dan? You're the best cameraman. <laughs> That's odd the way it looked like the, the rudder got jammed over and pushed that sediment around in a weird open pattern. I you guess when the stern hit. Uh, not really sure yeah, how. Yeah, you can come down a little bit. You want me to come to the other side or stay over here? I'm not sure what we're doing after this. Um, did you get a sense, Larry, where we're meant to have Atlanta? Because we yeah, could off, like, move off, it there now. Right. He, I think he wanted it off on the the left side from you know looking looking uh, from the rear end here. Um, and uh, Hercules over the top and middle of the sub, if that all makes sense to you. Uh, yeah, so Atlanta's shining at us. Right. Kind of like we did yesterday where yep. we had the tether draped over the mm -hmm. sub. Yep. Roger. Uh, and he wants it on the other side, on the west side. On the west side is what Roger. Okay, Chris, you can, yeah. And west we're going to do that by what, the conning tower or the... Well, it, it sounded like he wanted to come over the entire top. Now, um, I don't, you know, it, it stays pretty level till you get to the conning tower and then have to make a decision. Hopefully, it'll be back by then. Roger. Um, is anyone stainless, really? Wow. Well, I think just, uh, somebody said it was uh, an alloy, I thought. That, uh, Shiny, whatever yep. it is. Yeah, it's really um, impressive. Yeah. So we get a sense of which way the current's blowing here because that'll matter. Or just no current at the moment. All right. So you want me to come over to the other side? Uh, Is that where we landed? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure it matters. It, the conning tower is on the starboard side or the east side. So Star the conning tower is on the east side. Sorry, per yeah, east side. Yeah. Port side. And Hans, Russ made an observation. 
and I, he, I, I think he's right. It's Saint Stern first, and so the shifting of those things, you know, the bend to that rudder, I think that's indicative of that as well. These guns were trained forward, and now you see that it swung on over. Uh, I think that's probably because it got moved as well by the impact of the stern uh, as it hit, you know, stern first on the seabed. It doesn't in this depth of water. It doesn't take that long for you know a vessel of this size to uh, to fall and hit with some and hit hard. Yeah, hit hard. You're right. Oh. Did someone mention manganese bronze for these props? Oh, no. Yeah, I, th I thought uh, that that was. Uh, oh, close. Sorry. Sorry, cut a little. I heard bronze in 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 the in the remarks as an alloy. I didn't know what what the other was. Oh, there's a crab down there. Something. Oh, um, Manel, you want so to Hans, do a, well, he's not on do a quick zoom on the chunk of the, that yeah, steel right there that's exposed? Sure, that, that would be neat. Yeah, that kind of looks bronzy from this angle when you when you look at where it's been. All right, good man, because we're. All right, I've, they're they're trying. They're going to get Adelant over on the west side. Yep. yep. All right. And then Trump come over the top. Yep. That's what I've described. But uh, so I think that, they're uh, trying to get set up. Oh, zoom is it there? No, nope, not yet. There you go. Well, we could do the metallurgy if you get uh, close enough. Zoom into atomic scale here. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Someone ding that prop. Yeah. But, huh. Hmm. Let's just make sure we don't reading it with the camera lens there. <laughs> <laughs> I think the stainless will win. Yeah, I think it, it, it looks kind of bronzy to me. It almost looks hollow. Well, it looks like the, there's an I outer, just... an outer smooth material, and and I don't know if that's just uh, exposure, but uh, it looks like whatever is the inside is is a lot oh, coarser and gray. Pilot oscillations. Stop. Up. That's me. Porch view? Uh, no. No? Okay. I'm just botching right. it there. Are you ready for your uh, buck fever? You can go right things. All right, I'm going to start moving Atalanta. Yep. Okay, does it, yeah. Does it matter, John, uh, which side Atalanta's on versus which side? Uh, no. Roger. So we can just move Atalanta south and I can stay okay. on this side? Yep. Happy okay. with that? Yep. All right. I can start moving. Ready. You ready? Yep. All right. And you, okay, want, you want to be up higher. Bridge, bridge, nav 20170. Yeah. Start low, up, over, okay. and into the EK part. Okay, you're, and you're ready? You're going? No, I'm waiting for them to get back. Okay, you want to be right at the, at the uh, aft end. So behind, behind the, the vessel. All right. Is that right? Behind it? Yep. That's where he wants to start. Roger. And these are some sort of guardrails for... Uh... I think they have That's these what I on... think they look very familiar. With. I think they had these the so when you're docking the vessel you don't hit the bump the propeller into the... Right. ...into the bulkhead. Protect the propeller. Protect the dive plane. I had the joy gain down to 28 percent, and I was still shaking. <laughs> now these are the same sort of red paint marks we saw oh, yeah. on the 201. Yep. 390 some. I'm assuming that's feet. Yeah. Okay. So this is maybe something they did uh, in Pearl Harbor. They had good paint pins back then. <laughs> I think these are my favorite coral. No, oh, Paragordia? Yeah, they, yeah. They, they, are quite, they are quite beautiful. And, and again, this contrast of, uh, you know, an instrument of destruction with now, now a home for such beauty is... Uh, There's uh, places in both the... Uh, Come on. 
Pacific and Atlantic where those uh, they're just giant forests of them, like taller than the ROV, meters tall. Wow. And the, the, the base of them is, you know, the size of a, a person's leg. Where is this? Um, we've seen them in the Discovery Corridor off the east coast of Canada and also in the Pacific Northwest. No Tompion in that gun barrel, huh? Yeah, no, I don't imagine they were too worried about that. So, are you going to be using uh, Atlanta lights, Jonathan, or? Uh, that's correct, Atlanta lights. So I can stow this uh, manipulator that's hanging out here. That's correct, yes, sir. Roger, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we do the we do have a ship move in, so we're still going. Just keep that in mind. Which way are you going? South. South. Was that not the plan? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've lost the plot. Let's start right part. Yeah, I'm going to start dragging the scene. I can come down a bit, but not much. Yeah. I can stop. I mean, the ship is almost over at this point. But Are you ready, Jonathan? No, I'm running into a technical. Stand by. You're going to have to move it back. You got to move it, move it. What in the heck is... Uh, we have a question. How much does the substrate the vessel sits on move? Does the deep go. sea pressure cement the vessel in place or will it sink over time? Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I, I think it moves laterally. There's sediment that will shift with the currents and things like that. Um, I don't think it's strong enough here. I, I don't think it will oh. sink in. But um, we, you may see over. We're going to use that Atlanta Lakes anyways, Chris. So we're scouring in some areas, right and some burial in others. Atlanta Lake right there. It won't, okay. it won't sink like in. Right there, yeah. it's, it's solid yeah. enough that it'll. Yeah, something, something like that. Bridge, bridge nav, two zero three two five. Unless uh, you're you're set on starting at the stern here, are you, Jonathan? Yeah, uh, we'll want to back off as much as we can from the stern. And we're going to do that thing where we turn off the lights, and as we approach it, we're going to turn on the lights. Yeah, right. And you are just going to fly at Atalanta's pace. Something. <laughs> yep. Uh, All the way up. So we're going to put Atalanta basically where Herc is right now, and you want the light coming from the side or from behind us? I'm fine with Atalanta where it's at right now. It's like light years away. Can you turn off your lights? I can if I can find that right page. Where's that page? Uh, yeah, it's like 20 meters away. I'm dragging me around now, so. Fi fighting my tether to hold that heading. All right, move Atalanta closer, please. So that's that's the lighting you're getting from it, and. I need more than that. Atalanta's on the way. She's she's only rise only eight meters above me, so. Okay. Uh, it's gonna take a few minutes to get there, so. All right. Well, so well, we got I a few minutes go. for the ship move. Might as well go back and look at that oh. deck gun. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep missing our targets. Like yeah. See if we can find something we, interesting we, to look at oh, closer. So here he goes. Moving the ship back. Yes. Yeah. North. Yeah. That would be criminal not to. How about some of the bubblegum coral growing on the? Not to be that person, but. I think these are actually hemichorallium, so they're not paragorgidae. Ah, so how do you tell the difference? I always get the two confused. Me they're too, yeah. Pink and coral to me. <laughs> I asked Asako for confirmation, but since we haven't really, we could get a zoom to confirm, but uh, I think it's the branching yeah, pattern. Yeah, we're good. Um, paragorgidae kind of fork, um, make these Ys at the, right. the, like the first branching pattern that they make is this a big Y. Going, right? And these are kind of more like an actual fan. <laughs> um, and they're also more fragile when you touch them, but we don't want to do that, but <laughs> it's another way of knowing. Uh, um, but uh, zoom in there for us. Manila, so so what are these again, yeah. Taylor? I think that they're hemi hemichorallium or corallidae. Yeah, I think <laughs> you're right. Could. All right, so I'm going to format 213. 213 is done. Squat lobster. Yeah. 
If Asako, if you're there, your confirmation would be very helpful. <laughs> What's that? But I think that these are. I think Jonathan's making plans about. I'm making camera plans. Stuff. Sorry, guys. YOLO. Yeah, that one was a squat lobster. And it's. This uh, one is so pretty. Yeah. Definitely hemi crown. Yeah, beautiful. Jim, yeah, like looking at this piece and thinking it's like the uh, you know the upper piece of the okay. rudder that would move in conjunction with the lower rudder for maneuvering when submerged, but I don't know why it's bent like that and at that angle sitting right up here on the stern. Is that part of the upper rudder? It could be. Um, if, if this thing hit, I mean, if, when you look at the sinking photos, it's uh, going down after the torpedo hits. It's at quite an angle, and that bow is up. Uh, go, go uh, for wide for me, up. Yes. Copy. It, it had to have hit hard, Hans. Yeah, I agree. The plans I have for this are not very detailed, but it looks like this is an upper rudder, you know, similar to the lower rudder. But I mean, it's not doing anything else good back there except obstructing water flow if it's meant to be. That in that position all the time. Do you think yeah. it's bent over 90? Is that what you're saying? I'm thinking it would have been straight and it would have moved like a rudder for submerged maneuvering, but I don't know. You know, it's, it's obviously bent hard over and pushed out of normal position. Or maybe it's 180 out. It seems, seems strange yeah. thing to have on the back of the boat in that orientation. Right, I know. Maybe even the force of the water on its descent going down stern first was enough to tweak that rudder. Could it have rotated 180 degrees and bent on the superstructure there? I'm just guessing. Yeah. It doesn't look uh, like the 245s are even, does it? It looks like one's longer than the other. One has a different right. shape. Right, it's not, here. and in the plans, in the plans, it shows a single plane, a yeah. single piece aligned image. And we did get confirmation uh, from Asako that she also thinks these are hemichorallium, but they are very hard to tell apart, um, at least for me. They're both pink. They both have the knobby look to them. Um, Watch out for that camera. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Are we happy with the Atalanta position, or are we going to go even further? Can you turn uh, off the lights, please? I'd like to see what it uh, when Hercules is actually pointed in the right direction. Roger. Right, just get a shot of the uh, bent, bent, uh, possibly bent rudder here. Um, yeah, I can turn off the lights. <laughs> bent upper rudder. Final answer. Okay. Sorry, there's a dark pen. Oh, look at that. Look at that light. Uh, let me come around here. 100%. Full power. Larry, we have uh, some folks who have just joined us. Do you want to give them an update on what we're doing? You're not on SPL. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we are. This is our last day of this entire mission. Um, over this mission, we've explored a number of really uh, spectacular and exciting sites. Almost all sites that have been visited before, where we had some hint that there'd be really interesting things, because what we're doing is exercising and trying out some spectacular, spectacular new imagery technology. Uh, Jonathan Filey, sitting here on my left, train, uh, is uh, train designing and, and up a little bit. See what happens. Developing these very, very uh, high-resolution wide-angle cameras that allow us to create very detailed three-dimensional reconstructions Sorry, of what we see, and also um, allow us to image these features in a way that's uh, very conducive for things like an IMAX theater yeah. for a really immersive experience. And so that's yeah. the, well, you know the drill. focus to of the there. entire mission yeah. has been trying out these new technologies. Up. 
Uh, in our last two okay, days, we've light. been exploring um, several uh, sunken like Japanese submarines. Worse. These were submarines yeah, that were I think it's uh, be captured down. at the end of the war, brought to Pearl Harbor, studied by the Americans, and then intentionally scuttled, uh, actually during uh, uh, practice torpedo like runs um, the by U.S. submarines uh, off Oahu. Maybe, uh, yesterday we, we uh, visited a submarine called the I-201. Maybe you uh, look to the left a little which so Which is a very special submarine yeah. in that it was designed for very high submerged speeds. And that submarine, um, in theory, was capable of submerged speeds of up to 19 knots. In practice, probably more like 16 knots. But either way, that was remarkable for a submarine submerged in those days, uh, more than twice the speed of a U.S. submarine uh, at the time. Uh, Today, we're at almost uh, at an even more remarkable one. submarine. Yeah. It's called the I-401. Sorry, my heading is swinging And this wildly. is a massive, a 400-foot submarine that was built to carry uh, aircraft. It carried to move three ten meters north uh, of torpedo bombers Roger. in a uh, bridge, bridge nav, ten hangar meters, that was on uh, its hull. We don't see the hangar in the wreck. The hangar has uh, fallen off uh, here. We see little remnants of it, but uh, it is remarkable. It was uh, by far the largest submarine uh, uh, ever built and remained that way until 1965 when the U.S. built the Benjamin Franklin, which was somewhat larger. Um, it also uh, had a remarkable uh, fuel capacity, uh, capability to travel around the world uh, one and a half times, something like a 37,000 uh, mile range. And so really quite a, a remarkable technological achievement. Um, and uh, it was last visited, I believe in uh, 2009. And so not only are we uh, seeing what these new cameras can do in terms of really high resolution documentation of the submarine. And as uh, Jim Delgado, uh, one of our resident expert archeologists mentioned, the result of this will probably be the highest resolution uh, documentation of the submarine because uh, its blueprints were, were lost uh, after it was built. So from the kind of resolution we can get, you can really start reconstructing things. Okay, um, I am ready to go. Yeah. Um, is this as far back as you can get? Uh, no, we're moving out of line another 10 meters north, so. Can you try lateraling over to the left, please? And kind of looking at that direction of, I'm just trying to frame the light of Atalanta right now. Yeah, we're trying to get it uh, north a little bit more, so it's kind of not showing in our eye, but yeah. not giving us a shadow yeah more to the left I'm not sure what direction that is what that's uh, underneath Atalanta so it's above us shining illuminating and so what we're looking at is uh, the aft end the rear end of uh, a yeah I like that about a 300 yeah. foot section of the submarine it broke into two pieces um, I like this angle will be yep will look nicer yep it, and Jonathan is setting up uh, an immersive camera run. We, we just completed a photogrammetry run, the run that'll allow him to, to build the three-dimensional reconstruction, but now he's doing the immersive run. So um, for this one, um, if we can, I'd like to basically use the ship move or use the Atalanta move and match the pace of Atalanta along the entire length of this ship. And Dan, the ROV will be up to you completely, but you got to think very, very, very slow thoughts <laughs> and maintain approximately this standoff distance, or, I mean, I'm sorry, not the standoff distance, Atlanta. Yeah, Adela keep it in the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then um, if we can also use Atalanta, you might hear me say, uh, let's try sweeping the light. And what I mean by that is that we'll uh, do a heading change on Atalanta to use it as a gigantic lighting platform to kind of reveal uh, and bring elements in and out of the light. Roger. Okay. Sure. Um, and so just for this first shot, uh, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to ask, let's do all lights off and then, um, well, actually, I guess we got to get the ship moving and Atalanta moving um, south first. Roger. Say the word. Word. 
Word. All right, word. <laughs> you can uh, turn your lights off. So Jonathan has been setting up like a cinematographer the eight shots. Nav. Three zero um, positioning one, six, Atalanta zero. with its lights in a certain position, Hercules in another, and uh, we're all holding our breath, in waiting the for the drum roll and the big <laughs> reveal as the lights come on and we we start collecting uh, what will hopefully be some just spectacular uh, immersive I, imagery. I think we're all gonna ooh and ah. <laughs> yeah, and you can lights on at will. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Ship's underway. Are you ready? I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I see a light. I see a light in the distance. We should go check that out. Could be a submarine, eh? Could be. Atalanta has found something. Here we go. Uh, and just FYI, the starboard uh, lens is frozen by design, not right. by issue. And I'm going to actually right switch down. that out. Uh, I can just see one. That yeah, one that's go. there now. I, I just need one. It's fine. The audience would be happy with one too. Okay, have fun. You okay, have so the you have forty minutes and one move to make this. Okay. That's, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Take one. It's going to be a one, a one take wonder. One take using, wonder. <laughs> we're using every last available <laughs> second. Well, if you do it in forty minutes, you'll have one more minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. I'll take that minute. How's the weather for our Atlanta only dive? Is that going to happen, or we're going to get is, weathered out? It is uh, getting a little rougher out there, but uh, we'll, we'll see. And, and it's in a different spot too. So. The cups have to go down. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> I hope I can find my the cups I made for my kids. Um, oh, I got them for you already. I saw you left them in the data lab, so I put them in the bag for oh, the other ones. Thank you, I didn't Taylor want them to get left. <laughs> Taylor and to the rescue. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, Taylor. Oh, they were cute. Thank you. No worries. So I had a very, very last minute request for uh, a cup. Oh, yeah? Just about an hour ago. And, oh. and, <laughs> and uh, I went scrambling around, and uh, there were no more cups left except there's a whole pile of already decorated cups left over from a cruise in 2018 Ooh. and never got a chance to... Oh, and, wow. and, and they were beautiful. I 2018? 2018, yeah. Where did you find those? Uh, Rennie knew about them in the uh, in the data lab. I oh. saw a stack there, yeah. yeah. And they and were I... beautiful. And it had to be a big Philadelphia contingent because there was a lot of Pennsylvania and Philadelphia. Oh. And... Uh, so I, I found the, the, the least personal one. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-decorated. Yeah, Pre-decorated. Uh, it's good because it's certainly decorated much nicer than I would ever, ever be able to do. Yeah, <laughs> so. I can't wait to give mine to my kids. They're, we had a contest, and then I had the life skills kids also decorate some. And Can we try sweeping yeah. the light, please? Left or right? So, so uh, sweep it up the length of the hull. Yeah, right. Uh, Let's just try that. So, so the request yeah. came from my kid, my thirty, <laughs> my thirty-nine-year-old kid. <laughs> they and can be very demanding at well, that age. <laughs> well, it, I, I think this is uh, this is guilt because yeah, I think uh, you can sweep a little more. He was on board here. Oh, and, yeah, so it was. It was. No, and I asked, did he want one? He said no. And I said, well, I used to bring them home for you all the time, and you never <laughs> were. Oh, he says, oh, yes, I was. You know, I think he's showing me now. He's interested. So yeah, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> That's it, back to the original. Nautilus Door Party, this is Jim Delgado. I'm signing off. Uh, thank you all very much. An amazing dive, incredible tech, well, Jim, tremendous we, results. I'm looking forward to seeing more. Thank you, Jim. And we can't yeah. thank you enough for all the knowledge thank you you've, so much. you've imparted. Yeah, it, thank it was you, just Jim. wonderful to have you commenting on all this. Thank you. Have a great day, Jim. Thanks it's for It's always great in. to be part of such a great team. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank, you. thank you, Jim. Bye. Can we sweep the sweep it back up towards the bow? Yeah. And uh, I'll I will I will take another five degrees lower or whatever uh, Dan thinks is cool. Uh, you want me to come lower? Or? No, no, no. Uh, Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah, you can come down okay. a couple of meters. See what happens. Okay, Chris. That's like a ten 
10 meter offset there. If we can, uh, I'll try and. Let's, uh, so let's spin it back. Yeah. It's not a good look. Okay. Yeah, I'll try and keep that 10 meter yeah. offset there. Okay. There we go. Yeah, like Tell that. me that's if that's I get. That's getting better. Yeah. So now let's, uh, let's just pop up and over and start flying down the length of it, please. Oh, Dan, it, uh, we need to extend the cameras out all the way. Right. It. All the way until they flop. Sorry, Jonathan, I was having trouble hearing you. No worries, there you go. Sorry, we just got the cameras into position proper. Okay, so now... Um, <laughs> that's cameras. There's a quarter million dollars hanging off a one quarter inch bolt. And so let's... Uh, <laughs> no, it's a five. It's a five eight. It's a five eight. Um, no, it's quarter let's, inch. Uh, <laughs> let's please. A well worn one. Okay. Okay. Come on. We got <laughs> we got thirty five minutes here, guys. Let's do this. I'm uh, listening. I'm coming. It's, I can't move five thousand pounds of ROV that fast. Let's uh, just slowly lift over the top of the stern here, and then we're just going to slowly, gracefully fly the length. Uh, danger. Danger close, as close as you can get for the deck. Being I'm touching, safe. I'm too close. Do not touch the, without touching. Are you all right now, Jonathan, with where Adelante is? In it's, the it's, angle? it's superb. Okay. I'm not sure if there's an existing ship move that's helping drag it. Yeah, Chris, Chris is, uh, yeah, that's move, awesome. Move it, move it along with Trying yeah. to keep it 10 meters in front of us there. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Is it possible to get? To, oh, never mind. I'll use the Zeus here. Is the Zeus uh, Iris all the way open? Yeah, all the way open. I can hit the gain up a little, but it won't help. Yeah, yeah. It just oh, it's going to be noisy, but I just. Uh, no, I think it's better. Yeah, I got you. I uh, just use it for a reference here. Is this so better I don't or too much noise? Uh, what do you think, John? A little closer to the light, or stay back? Um, let's try flying through the light. Keep, can you keep? Let's let's try flying through the light uh, with the light kind of focused in on this deck gun. Roger sure. that. And by through, I mean like you know you can follow Hercules with the light once it okay. hits the deck gun because we will want to be careful. The the conning tower is maybe 10, 15 meters north of this. Okay. So he'll fly through South the light and then I'll pan left with him. So exactly. do you, you want to come over the deck gun or around it? Let, uh, I don't know. What do you think looks better? Around it. Like around, right? Yeah. Okay. When you go around, uh, let's occlude the light with the, uh, or occlude the image with the light there and the gun. Yeah, you might get a shadow from. Uh, oh, I might go the other way. Uh, go to my right. Yeah, kind of dip down. Oh, I love the fish. Good job, fish. It's like uh, an extra. If I do go to my right, that Atalanta is going to be shining right in my eye. You're all right. Yeah, never it. mind. You're right. Go, go left. There. Go left. Right. Atalanta's light has moved past the gun. Do you want me to pivot it back? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, as I come left, maybe you pivot right. You want me to come up and get it yeah. in the light pool? Okay. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. You want me to come up, Jonathan? Nah. Okay. Side light's best light. Okay. Side light for life. Oh. Or keep that uh, offset so you get the. Yep. Yep. The mud line in yep. the shot. There's a Queen song just a rocket in my head right now. <laughs> Which one? I <laughs> uh, can't, can't come up with the name of the. I'd have All to All right, think. that's that's good. Then uh, back up on top. Or? Yeah, back up on top, and uh, let's focus in the light on the light pool on Hercules here, so we can see some details about the gun Kay. or you the deck. Swing the right deck, then, yeah. looking at. Raj, yeah, and follow Hercules with the light. Uh, we'll get the. Uh, mechanisms of it, is that what you're after? Yeah. The little wheels and stuff. 
Yeah, I'm gonna put it in the shadow. Yeah, right. Yeah, with that. no worries. Let's let's just move. Let's just move out. Keep Shot going step. Left, then. Yeah. Okay, I'll follow left. Yeah. Let's All right. Go. I'm putting in another ship move. Right. Yeah, I'm getting close. Yeah, the ship is almost to the end. So. Great. Br bridge. Can bridge. Look, nav two left. zero one seven left. five. Yep. Yeah, I'm looking left. You're doing great. So let's just continue along the deck as if we're an aircraft uh, parking in the hangar. Yeah. As, as low as we can go until we reach the conning tower. I'm going to turn my aft light on. It shouldn't affect you. Yeah, it's probably good on the left. Yeah, I know. My heading's swinging. There you go. Yeah, keep the light on that conning tower, and then let's uh, zoom up towards it. Zoom, zoom. Lower. Lower. Right there. Good lower. Get on the deck. Kessel run here. I haven't gone through here, so I don't know if there's any gotchas. But Roger. Uh, no, there's there's an orbit set up so you can see your altitude if you want it. Yeah, Raj. Oh, nice. Way high. Yeah. All right, that's good. You're getting a little low now on your yeah. back. Roger. It's beautiful, though. But just this speed. Don't go any faster. Watch for the uh, little dangly bit there on the left-hand side. And right-hand yeah. side. And right-hand yeah. side. Think Herc will fit through there? Uh, I no. don't know. What does Norbit say? <laughs> I can't see it in Norbit yet. I have old data, but yeah, barely. We'll, f we'll find <laughs> out, won't we? Uh, we're uh, we're slicked up for intervention here, so <laughs> might see a little bump bump as we go through. But yeah, you're gonna. It hold looks your, like you just barely make it. The next the next will. obstacles, you're not gonna make it through. Hold, hold your breath. Yeah, but coming up here. You gotta come up above sure. these yeah. ones. What's that? These ones you're not going to make yeah. it through. Yeah. Definitely not going to make it through those. I'm looking forward to plot some of these passes. Jonathan's getting me some good data. Yeah. With the power of optical and sonar combined. Uh, so do we <laughs> want to come outboard of this here? Because it's, you know, dark, uh, dark and scary on the right side. Yeah, sure, if you want to. Yeah, I think so. If you're scared. I'm not scared, but you won't see a lot, which you just see a bunch of It'd shadows. Nice to get the I-401 there, too. Yeah, get, we, we definitely want All a right. nice one of the I-401 uh, signia. So just keep going like that. Move or we're moving? Yeah. yeah, we're still moving. Uh, the we're, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one more so we keep the motion up and it doesn't slow down. Yeah, but keep the motion with the ocean. All right. The so uh, I-401s. We might, I might have to pull the ship back once we get uh, to the end. Keep the outside. move. Keep yep. the move. Keep the I move. see it. I see it now. I see the. Uh, yeah, I right. see it in Atlanta. Yeah. Bridge, bridge. Center now. the conning Two, zero, tower one, seven, in zero. the frame and just maintain the centering, okay? Right. Por favor. Maintain the. Uh, center up the conning tower and use that as your pivot point. So yeah. come up for for the image. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, Roger. Yeah. Just let me know if you want but the light to go back towards right. it, Jonathan. Yeah, more yeah, more light. Yeah, maybe just a little. More light. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, point to the left a little bit more. There you go. To the left? No, Not it's you. not going to be. Uh, hurt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you come right. Get a little light right okay. in front of me there. Okay. Perfect. Okay, now now we can do the move around the yeah, conning lateral, tower. Lateral left. Lateral yeah. left. Roger. Y'all are doing fantastic. Sweet. Yeah, it uh, looks amazing. Just hanging out here for a minute to get out of Atlanta. Center. I don't get can too you close. can you center out? Center in the the conning tower needs to be center of frame. There you go. Now let lateral left. There we go. That's good. Keep the conning tower centered. What part of it? Uh, Up, look at down. Then uh, uh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Sorry. Oh, more light? Yeah, this is good light. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna for have to come for up, folks watching, come you can see the real okay. power of a two-body tow system. Yeah. If you look at the uh, feed two, that's Atalanta being pulled up and down by the surge. 
but Herc is staying very, very steady because it's decoupled from that. There, there we go. go. This is there perfect. We go. Maybe now back off uh, just a hair. Look right a little. Yeah. Back off just uh -huh. a hair. Let's let's. We're gonna have to own oh, the fact sorry. that we are in Hercules with that shadow. So just back off and then come down a little. Or under. Or Atlanta could come up. You're gonna have to come up. Yeah. Come up. Come up. Oh yeah. Wow, that's really yeah, that's nice. Eerie. Airy and beautiful. Okay, yeah, now let's uh, sink. Good. Let's okay. sink down the counting tower and just use it as we're waiting for Atlanta to keep moving. Roger. And what worked really well last time, let's just do an experimental uppers on as if we're, you know, discovering this for the first time and we're right, imagine the stadium off. lights noise. <laughs> <laughs> and go down. Going down. And we're exploring. I want to peek under and through the hole that was blown out um, under the conning tower here, please. Oh, uh, the hole to the right there? Oh uh, yeah, wherever that was, yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's down there to the right in the Smooth shadows. Smooth and steady. Let's just ignore Atlanta as she's continuing up to the Ford uh, rent. It could, uh, it could hold the ship over there if you want, or yeah, 10 meters. There, there's only eight meters left. I'll just let it finish. All right. Yeah, and that'll put Atlanta in, a, in an okay spot for you. And I'll just, yeah, I'll go ahead and hold it. Okay. Bridge, bridge. Yeah, and 10, hold position. 10 meters is a good light distance. Okay. This is this shot's done. You um, want to peek in the hole there? Yeah, let's peek in the hole. Roger. So you don't drag me. Yeah, right. Yeah. Come down five. Give us some side light there. Yeah, now you can see the double hole and the, and the pressure hole inside. I would uh, probably turn on the mid lights at this point to look in there a little more. Yeah, you can try, yeah. Probably not going to work. So, so, so that's what sinks a submarine, is a hole in the pressure hole, the inner pressure hole. Yeah, this is just too much backscatter to make work. We're going to have to go back to uh, moody atmospheric. Where's uh, where's uh, Atalanta rolling? Atalanta is coming to a stop, uh, sort of. Right. I don't know if you have high pack, but it should come to a stop right about How much time here. do we have left? 10, 10 meters. 10 meters. 30 minutes. Minutes. Oh. Okay. Um, can we swing Atalanta back down and try lighting up towards the conning tower? Let's see how that looks with all the lights off once uh, you're done poking around in here. That's fun. Yeah. It usually happens when somebody cues a radio. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's a radio. All right. You want the light? Certainly going woke right? us up back here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look back to your right, okay. and we'll move the ship uh, 10 meters north. You want to come back north? Yep. All right. Bridge, bridge, nav, 10 meters due north. Well, we could just continue the. Uh, what do, do you want to just continue down to do the rec, the serv the the words? Maybe let's just uh, continue down the yeah. hall yeah. and start doing the inspection while the ship is already there. Okay. Of, so you want me to stay? Yeah. Uh, we can take a nice look at the There you go. That that's a beautiful there. image right there. Let's just follow that all the way down. Roger. Keep the uh, dangerous uh, snaggy bits inside the center of frame, please. Roger. Spin a little bit more to the left. There you go. That's cool. Reveal the conning tower. Under, but yeah, there you go. Oh, that's amazing. Don't spin too much. I can uh, come right over them now, up to the tower. No, maybe. let's go, go, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say that the, the feature of the sand is fascinating. I can come around down low. Uh, do it, just continue on with what you were doing. I like all this rent. And then let's uh, slowly lift up towards the I-401. Right there. Uh, can I do a 
about that shadow. Nothing. No, that's okay. Shadow's fine. Roger. We gotta own the shadow. Own in the shadow. There you go. Go up, 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 up. Coming up. Oh, there's a sticky out bit there. <laughs> Found it. Found it. <laughs> Barely. Touched it. So I'd say let's go back down, uh, kind of flying like this. I want to investigate and sink down as rapidly as is safe. Let's look at the, uh, the formation of the sand as this submarine plowed into it. It's really cool fracturing down below. Roger. And you can back off by a half a meter. Roger. There's too much warping here. Yeah. Spin a little bit to the left, just just 10 degrees to the left. There you go. Just keep out of line, just barely out of frame. Sink down. Incredible. And back off of the ledge there by about five. Yeah, there you go. And then right on down. You want to see where it plowed in? I want to see. Yeah, let's let's really highlight the details of that. I can't believe that that is still a feature. You know, that hasn't been worn away. But you can see how it's piled up. And then let's follow this line of of you know obvious damage to the seafloor all the way up until. Uh, you can spin around the damage where, where the hole split in half. Roger. A little too close. Yeah. I got an orbit view for you there. Roger. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, just follow that in and uh, let's reveal the, 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 the damage up north. You can probably move the ship south now. Roger. Bridge, bridge nav. Two zero meters. Uh, ten yeah, meters due south. Look to your left a little for me. Okay. We got some viewers admiring your piloting skills, Dan. Affirmative bridge. Do you need more? Uh, yeah, maybe a little more. Can you light the conning tower from there? Um, I can kind of see it. Yeah, I'm just thinking maybe if I come up a bit. Uh, up. You'd have to look to the right to do it. Okay, you want, you want me to do it? Up to you, Dan. Uh, sure. Yeah, it'll, you'll get more shadow there on the... Uh, we got to own the shadow. We have no way around the shadow. Okay, hey, coming right. We are Hercules. We are Hercules. <laughs> Chris, are you comfortable uh, zooming out on the high-pack survey now at this point? Uh, yeah. yeah we're we we want to look for Oh, the that's eerie and beautiful. Whoops, sorry, too much. We want to look... Too much? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, oh, we no, that look was me. See oh. if we see a, de a debris field. <laughs> yeah. So, from what I saw, there's a, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff over in there, here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, there's stuff everywhere. There's this is there's a lot more debris here than there was at the last site. Yeah, I'd keep going. That's a beautiful circle, slow and stately. Just look at that damage. Can we get Atalanta closer for more light? I or can just lower. Yeah, I can come down. I can also bring in uh, some of the turn data and stuff too, which will give us a little bit more coverage if you're interested, Larry. It's going to yeah. look less pretty, but it'll be, it's more coverage. We're just thinking, uh, if we have a little extra time searching for the front end, 
And the only hint we have is that there was a debris field between them. Uh, so I there's guess, a, yeah. this is, I yeah. mean, there's that, a, there was a lot of debris this yeah, way. Yeah, that seems to be the concentration. Let's, okay, so let's I guess. see if you can light the conning tower from there. Okay. okay. Sweep that, sweep it up the uh, length. Can we reveal the conning tower in the darkness? And Chris, the distance uh, between where we are and the edge of that map to the west is what? The edge of the map is 158 uh, meters. Okay, so... No. No? The, an the answer is no. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go back towards this and holding it really steady. Um, so I want to do another stadium light turn on. 20 minutes or so once, uh, to get to there. Once the light's kind of back towards us. Okay. Sound good, Dan? Roger. Uh, 10 meters south, Chris. 10 meters south, Raj. Please. Bridge, bridge, nav. One zero meters due south. Uh, viewers staying absolutely amazed at the footage Jonathan has been directing. Will there be a finished product to view? You better believe it. <laughs> I don't know when, but hopefully by tonight we'll have a finished piece to view. Um, no, what, well, what I, I wouldn't call it finished by tonight. Yeah, uh, no. So, so in, in seriousness, we're we're. Uh, this is all footage to demonstrate, and this whole cruise has been to yeah, uh, yeah, demonstrate, in the shot. come up a bit, okay. and validate the camera system's performance. So this takes a, a, a while, of course, to, to produce this type of material, which is really suitable for uh, projection uh, pull it tight. Gonna back on um, yeah. on surfaces like uh, the MGM Grand mm. Dome and big big so. dome theater projections. Chris. You see, yeah, you Larry. See, yeah, I see that out there. That yeah. there, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's the way we should head. Okay. Yeah, it was just looking, and yeah. sure enough. Okay, so Dan, yep. let's um, let's go forward, and then once you get close to the damage, turn turn your uppers on, uh, stadium style. Roger. And make the sound effect in your head. You want to? Um, you happy with? Uh, yeah, I'm super Atlanta's. happy, Atlanta. Yeah, I like okay, how it's... you want to hold position there, Chris. Roger. Looks really Bridge, cool. Bridge, Nav, hold position. This last shot, and then we'll, we'll, we'll be good. Yeah, that's really exciting, huh? Okay, yeah, so you can you can start your move whenever, uh, Dan, and again, we're just going to go up, and right. uh, you're going to turn your flashlight on. <laughs> My flashlight. 10,000 to do thousand lumens just imagine if just imagine it. the largest relay you've ever seen Dan turning <laughs> on uh, a viewer wants to know 50 uh, automobiles sorry uh, go no go, go ahead Dan no you go ahead okay <laughs> a viewer's asking if Jonathan was a Hollywood director in a past life why a past life <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, any time with the uppers? Do it. You are the explorer, Dan. There you go. It's going to come up and yep. sweep them over the uh, carnage yep. here. So while yep. you guys are all ooing and eyeing over the damage, I was ooing and eyeing over the, the what it did to the seafloor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I'm surprised. Uh, Dan, the, the ROV is yours now. You can peek around, and then I think this uh, filming is done. Right. Okay, w when... Jonathan calls it done. What we've been given another couple of hours, believe it or not. Guys. Oh wow! What? And, wow. and and what we'd like to do is explore to the west. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd, I'd, like, I'd, I'd like to I'd, tell I'd, the viewers that we had the two RV pilots giving each other a high five right now. <laughs> well, I, I, that's three wonderful RV to see. It's, 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 <laughs> it, it shows how much they enjoy what they're doing. That, that that's really great. Um, so what we'd like to do is in orbit mode, explore to the west. Ooh, in orbit mode. Yeah. You want to uh, uh, it's K2 bring your head to the right now? Mapping mode. No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and uh, K2 has uh, I really a potential, like what you're doing right some now, Dan. Poten some potential targets out there that we will yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, either. actually, now that you pointed that out, that does look yeah. fairly promising. Yeah. And uh, I think when we uh, when we get there, and, and it, if it looks interesting, we'll uh, come down lower and take a look. We're not going to do any more filming for Jonathan. It's just it's really just exploration and. So you want to just do a high altitude transect over over that way? Yep. Okay. Cool. And then if we start seeing targets there, we'll come down lower. Roger. Yep. Okay. You can. Uh, I mean, ROV is yours. I, I'll keep recording until we're away from the boring. Roger. Uh, 
which uh, I'm waiting for a direction from Chris, so I don't know where we're all right. going. So you want to? All right, we're going to start doing that right now. Yep. Yeah. Whenever you're ready. I'm done. All right. Keep going higher. What's on top of this? No idea. Let's go. Let's explore. This is the spirit of exploration. So, Larry, what time are what time is the ROV back on deck? Well, originally uh, we had a right. uh, 2 p.m., but that's been extended oh, that's to 4 cool. p.m. That's 4 really cool. Yeah, so we'll, right. we'll we'll start coming up All at right, finish that, and then when you are ready, right, let's bring it up to uh, three five meters. That seems to work really yeah, well and, for and actually, maximum range. Why don't you just follow that uh, the bent periscope all the way up to three five meters and let it leave frame oh, and yeah. we'll be done. See, yeah, good thinking, Jonathan. Yeah, we're we're let's make use of every the power of second. optics and sonar combined. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is this is really cool. And, and unlike the I-201, which had this seemingly enclosed uh, <coughs> conning tower, this this looks more traditional in terms of an area yeah. where people would stand, a bar for them to hold on to. And, and to my recollection, Dan, there were no uh, hanging debris or anything. Roger. I have a 180-degree camera. I can see. Yeah. <laughs> a viewer is saying that the cylinder on the front of the conning tower is the ship's whistle. Oh. Where is the? It's, it says on the front of the conning tower. Oh. Is, that, is it that little guy, that guy at the top of the frame? Oh, yeah. I guess so. Oh, you see a nav light, too, next to the yeah, I see, periscope. I see a nav light. I oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Is that like an RDF or something? The, the star-shaped antenna deal? There were... Well, I, I, that's a good question. Um... We saw yesterday on the 201 something that looked like a RDF-2, but that was bent, and this might be one that's not. Yeah. If, if I remember reading, there were several radars on the conning tower. Oh, cool. They had an anti-aircraft radar and then a yeah. more surface ship oriented radar. Come down a bit and do yes, the please. rest of it? Yeah. Yeah. Looks like uh, there was something. I can't quite get around there. I don't have the tether. Something bolted on right there. Oh, they did say that they the periscope was re one of the low light periscopes was removed uh, by the Americans for further study before scuttling the ship. So it, it's what it could have been. The the other thing that was interesting to me reading about this is that they said uh, during one of its later visits to a dry dock. A snorkel was installed, and I guess the the most oh, of the, yeah. most of the Japanese submarines didn't have snorkels. Seems surprising. And it's all, it was only later in the war that they installed snorkels, huh. and, and that's a way to charge the batteries when they're running submerged. Yeah. Okay, keep uh, just keep on up, and let's let that uh, snorkel leave frame, and then right so it. I can cut this. Uh, I need to cut the film. Right Are we going to get to say cut? Yep. <laughs> would you like to? You're, no, no, you're, you're, the, no, you're, you're the director. You're, you're the watch. You're the watch lead. Yeah, but you're the director, so <laughs> right, yeah, we're sure. just here to serve the director's needs. Naturally. <laughs> you need, I wasn't a, you need a special chair, Jonathan. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, it's true. Almost, this, almost as nice as the pilot's chair. Yeah. I hate this chair. You can have it. <laughs> really? Yeah, I just want a regular chair. <laughs> trade you. <laughs> I would trade you. What? I've tried to uh, unbolt it, and we had it in the uh, utility room for a while. It was very popular in there for sitting in and talking on your cell phone. All right, spin, but keep going up. You got to let it leave frame. You got to let it leave frame. Roger. And fly over and into the infinity. Come on up. And cut. <laughs> oh, Yay. Yeah, you see, wow. it's a wrap. It's a wrap, wow. everyone. Yay. <laughs> Outstanding. Very All cool. Right. That was awesome. That yeah, was, you want to line up with Atalanta super, and then we'll super driving, go from there. Super Which driving. way are you going? Uh, Could have had a monkfish. We're fish. going uh, <laughs> 285. Could have had a monkfish. Monk no. Uh, this will give no, us another. What? This will give us another pass <laughs> on the. Uh, yeah, there was a monkfish on this wreck, On too. the submarine, too. I didn't want to say anything because we were so like. But now I feel so level. betrayed. Hey, listen, I was just trying <laughs> to respect <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Yeah, just kind of start here. We can get navigators. we'll get a free pass on the submarine. Roger, um, uh, we can go anytime. 
Or do you want me to be lined up? Yeah, get lined up. Roger. Uh, you'll have to come up as I come left. Okay. Go back to full okay. power mode here. I'm going to do a DVL reset before we get started here. Roger. Uh, it doesn't like that map. Too many pixels. Uh, be quicker if I... I mean, hold on before you come up. I'll just turn and burn to the south there. Okay. Roger. Take forever to lateral there. Okay, as um okay. flying rapidly towards you, you can come up. Okay. Oops, too far down. But not turning on? No. Uh, no. I should come back up. Coming up. It's gonna come right under you. Yeah. To the east of you there, and then. Wow. Okay. And uh, if anyone's interested in seeing the three-dimensional model we just did, um, I just published the deck gun, five-inch uh, deck gun from the IN-104 we just saw today. It was just published up on our Sketchfab, uh, sketchfab.com slash evnautilus if you would like to print that at home or otherwise view it. If you do print it, please do tag us at Nautilus Live. This is the future that would be awesome to reach one day where we can provide near real time, three dimensional visualizations of the objects we explore. And that's what you're seeing wow. in uh, Sat Feed 3 and Channel 3. Yeah. Okay, um, whenever Chris is ready, I can start heading wow, west. Wow, that's really cool, Jonathan. Five, whatever comes and, first. And that date was collected how long ago? Two hours, yep. yeah. Wow. All right, let me, I'm gonna give The turnaround time is remarkable. Two, eight, yeah. five. Two eight five, and there's the coral. Yeah, those are the amazing corals that were right at the tip. An exciting future. You can even see, of course, through the deck, through the decking itself. Bridge, bridge nav, three hundred meters. Two eight five. <sighs> awesome. What ten? Why is it ten? Ten what? Oh, my heading. Uh, how many meters you going, Chris? Three hundred. Yeah, and, and possibly more, but. Well, the the. Right here. Okay, here we go. The uh, are you happy the, with this altitude? The, the her report meters? said that the uh, the bow was uh, 250 meters. Okay, well that's pretty darn yeah. that's pretty darn close to what We're, that right. target that we saw. Yep. Uh, All right. And that's been We're at ready to go. 28 meters up. Full beans. Well, 0.3 beans. Yeah, that's 10 meters a minute. That's almost walking speed. What? Well, uh, yeah. Almost. Depends on who's walking. That's snailing speed. My grandma, my two-year-old, or... My mom when she's chasing me. Uh, is it going? Are you going, Adeline? Are you going, Hurt? What are you doing, Hercules? Sometimes it... Yeah, it didn't take the steps there. I'm not sure what... That's weird. Now it's gone. Yeah, so even if you look here in the, the Norbit map from earlier, the yeah, we can see uh, something sticking up over there on the very edge of what we could see. So oh, yeah. that's the direction we're headed, hopefully. Hopefully, we find that. Oh, I think they're pulling.